Okay, and we should be recording now. Um, second, yeah. All right, here we go. Welcome everybody to another edition of Amplify Your Message. Or sorry, that's the wrong program. Should <laughs> get, should get the uh, episode right here. Okay, here we go. Good day, everybody. My name is Lance Johnson, and I want to welcome you to another edition of Amplify Your Business. And so on today's show, we have the privilege of talking to a good friend of mine, uh, Dominic from Urban Thrift down in Calgary. Dominic's going to tell us a little bit about their experience as they transitioned their bricks and mortar business into a business that is pretty much focused on online right now during this COVID crisis situation. Um, but he's got some interesting things in place and see some great opportunity in kind of changing the way that he is considering this kind of blended approach of online and the bricks and mortar and how the two work well together. And so uh, I guess I'll bring you on to the show now, Dominic, why don't you say hi to the audience and tell us a little bit about Urban Thrift. Hi everybody, thanks uh, Lance for having me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, I have a consignment boutique in Calgary. So we offer sustainable clothes for, for both men and women. And uh, we opened just recently, so we haven't been around very long before this whole COVID-19 uh, business uh, hit us all hard. Um, and yeah, and so we've just been coping the best way we can uh, since March. Yeah, so, and you're no stranger to pivoting your business because the last time I was visiting your store, that was when it was more of a th thrift store um, located in the north uh, east side of the city. And now you're um, a little bit more focused on consignment or exclusively consignment now. How does that work exactly? Well, exactly. We, we did, uh, in the past, we were a thrift store and, and a, recyc a textile recycling depot. So essentially, the majority of our clothes, um, our raw cl like inventory came from, from our uh, recycling efforts, right? Um, but we ran the store as more of a boutique type thrift store. And um, the recycling component was never obviously profitable. I did it more as a, you know, because I wanted to uh, be involved in a social enterprise. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, but as as the years went on, I realized that that the thrift part of the business, or the major part of my business, or the most profitable part, was men's and ladies' clothes, shoes, bags, and accessories. And okay. so when my lease came due in you know, last year, or the year before, I started, uh, or even prior to the lease coming due, I started researching or looking at different locations where I could downsize and maybe just focus on. The, the categories that sold um, and unfortunately I know I had to give up the, the recycling efforts we used to uh, we used to send close to Africa we used to recycle them through a very various, various organizations we used to do a lot of really good things that way we still do and we still work with a lot of those organizations but uh, but we decided to downsize relocate into a more uh, trendy sort of area with a little more foot traffic and uh, we're about one quarter of the size we used to be with uh, you know, a third of the staff and uh, a lot less overhead. So, I mean, I had 6,500 square feet at the old location. I'm now 1,800, so. Yeah, yeah, so big changes there. Big changes. But, but I think this is something really important, I think, for the audience to understand. And this is where I think a lot of small business owners uh, will sometimes struggle as they wanna hold on to the business model uh, or the way of doing things that they've always done it before when they, you know, for the last few years. And so uh, it's really interesting to see that you've made this pivot um, prior to COVID, obviously, uh, what, about six months or so before COVID? Yeah, you we opened in December, actually. Okay. Yeah. So in that uh, situation, you're seeing opportunity, you're seeing some uh, elements of the business model that maybe wasn't as profitable as what you needed it to be or or wanted it to be. And so you were made those changes strategically speaking. And sometimes when you start a business, uh, you're, you know, satisfying a need, you think that you're doing the right things um, and that this, it, you know, idea is going to grow into something that's going to be really profitable. And so it's difficult at times to kind of let go of those 
those notions of what it could be. And so um, a lot of you know, people talk about failing fast so that you can dust yourself off and, and well, those then are the pivot options, the business. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the options. It's like uh, cutting your losses or reinventing and trying to uh, think and, and, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. but, I, you know, if, if, yeah. I'd have, if I'd have realized a year earlier, it might have, might have been even better. But yeah, yeah, so we reinvented the business and we had to open up a new store. And then with that came, you know, basically an entirely new business that we had that, so I was starting from scratch. I had to, uh, choosing POS systems, changing the website, informing my existing customers, uh, not only of the new location, but of the new model, because now we were no longer uh, getting our inventory from, from donations and, and recycling. We were getting them from, uh, from our customers. We were a consignment model now. So, uh, so it was a big turn and yeah, a major pivot, more of a reinventing of the business at that point than, yeah. uh, than anything. But I stayed with the original name and, and I had a lot, a lot of goodwill, 12 years, it, uh, the business had been around. So, uh, I decided to keep the, the name and, uh, and, uh, all the goodwill that was surrounding that cause we had a, a pretty good reputation. Yeah, exactly. And so leverage what you can right out of the yeah, exactly. previous business and then uh, keep the elements that make sense. And so you touched on the POS system there a little bit. So um, from what I understand from a previous conversation you know, I had is that that was a critical piece to starting this new business as any retail business would really need to be looking at that POS system. And so you chose a particular POS um, and then you kind of built or bolted other things onto it that integrate with it in order for your, you to have this online store and so on. So why don't you walk me through uh, that a little bit? I'm curious to know, and, and maybe the audience would be as well as to um, how you came to using the particular POS and what your, your decision-making process was at that particular point in time. Well, everybody's experience is going to be different. I mean, and it's all a matter of uh, if you're starting a new business from scratch, it's much easier. You can do the research up front. You can choose all the pieces that integrate properly together, that, uh, that offer the features that you need and want. Uh, when you're taking a business and changing it, it's a little, it's a little different. Uh, yeah. So we had a, we had a, um, uh, I, I decided to go with a, P, a POS system that was specific to consignment. And it okay. had enough benefits that it uh, it had enough inherent benefits on the consignment side uh, to offset some of the limitations when it comes to uh, some of the things that the bigger U.S. like you know the Shopify's and the big commerce stuff offer uh, as far as integration with social media and things like that. So I made some. You're always doing a you know pluses minuses list and figuring out what uh, the big pluses the big pluses on the consignment side were that uh, people had their own online portal where they could go in and shop and manage essentially their own store when they can sign their clothes so they can uh, and it's a big hit I mean people love it they get uh, they check to see what's what of their inventory has sold online or I mean in the store uh, for them, it's online because it's their online store, right? They're looking at their inventory, seeing what's sold, what's uh, uh, what's still there, and, and they, what we owe them, you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's great. Yeah, and so I would think, which is very unusual than most other retail stores, is you've got that consignment aspect of it. And so it was critical to find a POS system that was going to work well in that environment. Um, exactly. So what is the POS system that you're using then? It's a company called Ricochet, and they're based out of uh, just the other side of the border, in Washington, uh, Utah, I believe. Okay. Okay. So, so really interesting. So if anybody is in that consignment uh, space, that might be a good choice. Uh, but yeah. like you said, it probably, if you're not doing consignment, that maybe isn't the best choice. Probably There's going to be some other ones out there honest. that are a little better. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. Uh, and I mean, it has some glitchy little uh, US-centric yeah. uh, things to it. No penny rounding, all kinds of little... Uh, you know, in, in the States, they use a lot of uh, credit card, not a lot of debit credit. So they actually have a uh, more check writing options than debit credit. If you can imagine that, it's <laughs> kind of a strange. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so there's a little eccentricities, but, uh, but on the whole, it works pretty well.
Yeah. yeah. And I think that's really important as well for the audience to understand is that, and this has been my experience as well, is you can't find oftentimes a piece of software that checks off all the boxes. And so you have to prioritize the things that you're willing to basically uh, forego in order to have other things that are going to be more important. And so for your business, the consignment management piece of it, which would be just absolutely huge uh, if you didn't have that, where you're, you'd be fielding a lot more calls and emails from all your day. consignees and yeah. And so this allows them that opportunity to go in and kind of manage it themselves or see the progress of some of that. So that that's brilliant. I think um, it's really important to be starting at those core things. And as a small business person, there's only one of you, right? And so sure, you might have some staff, but you're wearing a lot of management hats and a lot of customer communication hats, I'd imagine, too. Yeah. And so it would just be overwhelming, right? Yeah, I can't imagine the number of phone calls I'd be fielding. Uh, yeah every day if I didn't have that that capability or, or my customers didn't have that capability. So, yeah, so really other important. things like gift cards, uh, I had to implement a third party program for gift cards that I had already had in place. And that was another thing of, you know, making it all work together. Um, yeah, so there's different components that, uh, that uh, there's a lot of research will go into figuring out what works with what and what integrates with what and making those best decisions. And, yeah. I think I think it worked well. We were we we opened in December. Uh, the response was amazing, and things and and our sales were growing every month right up to March twelfth. When, yeah. <laughs> and when then COVID hit. Around. So yeah. So maybe speak a little bit to uh, to the impact of COVID COVID on your business then. Yeah, it's it's well, it, uh, obviously it's been huge, not just to me, but all small businesses. So uh, yeah. Uh, uh, like I saw, said, we were we were seeing some significant growth in sales, and looking forward to, of course, surviving. We survived the two worst months in retail, being January and February, where you typically don't make a lot of a lot of money, no yeah. revenue. So uh, we survived those, and we were eagerly looking forward to the spring and March, April, May, September. Or, yeah. uh, I got the chronology wrong, but <laughs> uh, okay. but we you were. We were looking forward to it, and uh, and then of course, I can I think May March twelfth, tenth, uh, everything just stopped when they uh, uh, when COVID hit, and uh, yeah, and it wasn't until the twentieth, I believe, that the government asked us to close. But uh, I think I closed on about the sixteenth when the impact was felt, and I was starting to get uh, a lot of feedback from customers that I should didn't know. I should probably be closing. So before I, you know, be, before there's a negative perception as to why you're staying open, I, I decided to close a few days early. Yeah. But since then it's been, it's been a challenge. And then we've been working on reinventing the business again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, to, to, to cope for with the, the new normal or survive in the new normal. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, let's walk through a little bit of that conversion or pivoting into this um, online uh, store then. So you weren't online before or were you as well? We we weren't. I mean, okay. it was something I had been researching. It's something I had planned to do. Like, like I'm sure a lot of small businesses, uh, I mean, they know the importance of, of online. Yeah. Um, so what it did was it expedited that, those, those plans yeah. significantly. <laughs> and, uh, when, when I realized I needed, uh, I needed to do something, um, so I, I had done, I was lucky, I had done some research uh, into the different platforms that are available and there, there are a lot and uh, some of the big ones are really easy to implement and so if someone's doing this for the first time, they may be the best choice. Uh, I decided to go with the, the one that's offered within my POS just so yep. that I could manage my inventory both online and in store uh, a lot easier rather than running two separate uh, stores and two separate warehouses, essentially. Yeah. Um, and again, it came with some limitations and some benefits, uh, that being the biggest one. But, uh, you know, there's there weren't the integrations with social media that some of the bigger uh, names in e-commerce come with out of the box. Um, so, yeah, so that's uh, – and it's been – we're just – and then, of course, there's putting everything online and taking photographs and making sure, like, so there yeah. was, uh, that's taken up the majority of my time during this COVID period is, is 
getting the inventory up there and I'm still not there. Maybe, maybe we maybe have 250, 300 items out of our thousands of items that are in our store. Yeah. So that will take up a lot of your time, making sure that, that, that it's consistent, it looks good. And uh, yeah, so that's, the, that's where we're at. We went live uh, only a week ago. So. Okay, so one week into being live. So what are some of the lessons learned that you would want to share then with the audience in terms of, of that? So maybe some of the biggest challenges that you had in coming online um, or what you see now as some potential opportunities, I guess, because of it. Um, well, it's funny because well, obviously the, the work involved in doing the photographing and, and, and implementing everything is, is a lot. So, I mean, don't, don't underestimate that. Um, there's, uh, you know, it's really researching the, the platform that you're going to go with is probably the most important thing and, and what it offers and how it integrates with what you're using with your existing store and your existing POS. That, that was probably the biggest issue and the biggest challenge was making it all work. Yeah. Uh, and uh, everybody's planning to implement with one of the, like, it's, it's like everything. It's like big box stores. I mean, the, the Shopify, the e-commerce, uh, or sorry, Shopify, big commerce, WooCommerce are all the, they're the big players. And uh, so Facebook, Instagram, and all of these platforms, Google, they, they cater to them and all the APIs and all the plugins and all the, all the integration is, is around these big platforms. So if you can go with one of those, I, that's probably your best bet. Yeah. Um, so that's that's advice around that. Uh, yeah. So a lot of a lot of time just on the research phase and trying to get those figure out what integrates with what, so you're picking the right solution. And and uh, just so the audience knows, this is something that we um, find a lot of clients are challenged with. Not obviously just in the retail space, but the uh, other spaces or other uh, sectors of the, uh, the of the economy of the industry. So. We uh, typically, when we come in and we start working with a client on the marketing side of things, there's a lot of inter integrations that we want or need to have in place because we're dealing with social media uh, yeah. platforms for them. We're dealing with um, some of the uh, ad platforms and so on. And so when you have the ability to integrate with those, it does make everybody's job just a lot uh, easier. And so there are some interesting pieces of software out there that people can use to integrate different um, software solutions, uh, particularly online uh, solutions. And so uh, Zapier is one, uh, just so the audience knows, is um, a great one that you, for a lot of platforms, you can basically transfer data between the different platforms or have actions occur in one platform that's related to an action that occurred in another platform. And so these integrator type uh, software solutions are something that uh, one might want to take a look at. And I don't know if that's something that was going to make sense for you uh, in your particular case, Dominic, but uh, just in general, I just wanted to mention that to the team or to uh, basically everybody who's on the call today to look at that. So when you are piecing together the software solutions, uh, there, even though maybe in, they don't have those integrations out of the box, there is a way to create those integrations afterwards. And of course, yeah. if anybody's struggling with figuring that out, I you definitely feel free to reach out to me. To Especially... To especially with the growing importance of selling on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's critical that, that, that your POS and your, and your online e-commerce tools integrate uh, well with those. So that's, yeah, that's important. Yeah. So I'm just going to share the screen here so that we can take a look at your website and your shop and that. So everybody's got a, sense as to what you're you've built here so um and if, if anybody wants to go and visit urban thrift it's uh, urbanthrift.ca is the main site and uh, so this is what that looks like and so right off the top here you've got the shop online you got shop over here which is going to then pop uh, people over to the actual shop which is built on the um ricochet right you said yeah yeah ricochet platform and then you get the ability to search by different categories and uh some featured items that are on here as well so i'm just going to pop back over to urban thrift so are you finding that um you're getting pretty decent traffic into your site right now or is that an area well, that we're, uh, we're working on that that's something that's okay. uh that's 
become a bigger focus. We were more, obviously with the shift to online, we were more previously focused on the social media, the, the Facebook, Instagram, and all of that. Yeah. Uh, now, once you make that switch, if you're not tightly integrated with Facebook and Instagram, you really got to start promoting your website in a completely different way. Yeah. So, so we're, I'm working on the SEO and all of the things that are required to, to really get some traffic to our website. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's an ongoing effort. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, on the website, you noticed uh, when we were, while we were talking about reinventing businesses, another thing that I added there was the local shop local uh, category. Here, let's take a look uh, at that again here. And I think that's really also important when people are trying to pivot and figure out. Um, now I'm I'm researching. I've got a couple of dip. It's empty now, of course, but coming yeah. soon we're we're going to be adding. Uh, sustainable products that are manufactured locally and it's another way of sort of pivoting your business and finding different things that so we'll be offering you know beard lotions and soaps and and uh, uh, bath bombs and and other products that are new but only if they're manufactured sustainable sustainably and 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 locally yeah and uh and that's just an i think that's going to be uh really cool and uh, i'm looking forward to that yeah. So are you responding to a need from your, your customers or a desire from your customers? Are they communicating that they want to see some of that? Or is this just some of the research that you've been doing? I think that? just online, it's, uh, yeah. it's just another really uh, important um, category, I guess, of a product. To think. Yeah. And, and, and in, in keeping with, uh, with the whole sustainability concept of our store and our business model and our, you know, what and we're all about. The history as well yeah, of Urban Thrift exactly. was really based on a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. So staying true to your brand, which is one of the reasons why probably a lot of the clientele that you've got right now are supporting you is because of some of those brand positions that you took yeah. in that environment. I should probably mention we've, uh, you know, we've maintained a lot of our relationships with the charities that we work with too. And the one being the Center for Affordable Water and Sanitation Technologies. Okay. They're an amazing organization based out of Calgary that, that work, does a lot of incredible work globally. Um, and, uh, and we still work with them. Uh, people can come and come in and consign their clothes directly to uh, cost uh, if they so choose. Uh, and then the, their portion of the profits go directly to cost and we kick in an extra 10%. So we, we we're managing to, to keep those relationships with our, with our, you know, the charity partners that we love. Yeah, that's a great win-win, right? For yeah. well, or a triple win, really. The charity wins. You guys are winning because you are, um, you know, building that uh, place within everybody's consciousness who are interested in supporting something that's more that goes to sustainability. And then obviously the consign e all also yeah. uh, wins too. Yeah, so that's really the good. Whole, the whole reason I got, you know, I mean. I used to be in the corporate world and the whole reason I made this shift was to do a little bit more uh, giving back in, and I figured you could still yep. run a profitable business and still do some good for, for the local economy, the local charities and the environment and all of these things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's definitely one of our mantras at Ample Media uh, is we serve first and it seems like things good things come to those who take that approach right who are uh, giving of their time and and as much as we can possibly do it that is i mean obviously there's limitations to it but um but definitely giving first and and what you're doing there is going to build that tribe of of loyal supporters and followers to your to your business as well so that's really great and so in terms of the uh store it's been open for a week um, your, what are some of the things that you've noticed so far that you think you want to either amplify, do more of, or is there some things also that maybe you're going, okay, well that didn't work quite the way that I thought it was going to work. And so I need to start to tweak that a little bit more. Well, we've, uh, certainly getting enough product on there. I mean, you don't want people to come and, and, and be disappointed in their experience when there's not enough yeah. uh, product in there. Um, so that was the first challenge, which delayed the launching of the online store. Um, and as far as, um, some of the positive things that have come out of it, I mean, the, the business has been a trickle, 
uh, we are getting some business from the online store. Uh, one of the positives is uh, is the scheduling tool for pickup and drop off, which which has mm -hmm. people have really been adopting and and I think uh, can serve a lot of different purposes. Um, as you see going forward, when you bring this up, there's a there's a schedule a time to shop, which I think in the new normal is going to be a huge um, a huge thing. I think people will love to be able to come in and do more of a one-on-one -on -one in a safe type, safer type environment uh, where we're practicing all the proper social distancing rules. And, uh, but they're still getting this excellent customer service, right? So they're using it now for pickup and drop off. Uh, but I think going forward, it's going to be a, a huge, and it, it, here's something we discovered that I never would have assumed would be uh, a great thing in the new normal, but, um, uh, as a matter of fact, it was it's it's led me to make the decision uh, not to open the store to foot traffic on the fifteenth when I think the government's allowing it. Yeah, um, I'm actually going to wait till next month and really promote the personal shopping uh, in the meantime. And so the concept there is somebody can book some time and they are the only ones allowed in the store to browse through the store and have one of your stylists um, help them that's, out. Then that's the purchase. idea. So it's yeah. uh, you book a 45 minute block, you come in, it can be one or two people I'm thinking. Okay. And, uh, and you come in and you shop for 45 minutes and uh, with the stylist of your choice, eventually yeah. uh, right now we're, we're, we, we've got a limited staff. So <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the idea, and I think I think it will be good. It would be ideal if that's if that model took off. It would be a a great way to shop. Yeah, it's kind of a white glove treatment, right? And so, yeah. which is a very unique way of approaching retail. Which you know, that kind of customer service was something that was definitely reserved for some real luxury brands, right? And and almost a throwback to to older times in which yes uh, exactly yeah, but yeah. but in these new times i have a feeling that yeah. that you may see a little bit more of that one on you know the real one on one service that uh, that used to be that's you know maybe not the most profitable model but when people are this concerned and and it might be the way to go for a lot of people and i think it'll resonate yeah yeah, totally. I think that's brilliant. And the thing that also that is going to happen through this uh, booking is that you're going to be asking for their contact information as well, I presume, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, and so when yeah, sorry, go ahead. schedules a time has to uh, obviously leave their phone, uh, email and uh, yeah, so I can contact them. Yeah. So in the past, you know, with the regular foot traffic that come into a retail place, uh, unless they purchased, you wouldn't have that opportunity to grab their information. And even in some cases, when they are purchasing, they're not That's signing up true. or giving you the information. And so this really empowers you to build that list of uh, people who, you know, love your store or are interested in your store. And so then you can do some follow up marketing to them. Uh, speaking of which, I know that you would have a, quite a customer list from before, and you've probably been building that since December within the, the new location. Um, how are you reaching out to uh, existing clients uh, or past clients right now? Um, well, the, the every consigner gets automatically added to our email list and we've had yeah. Uh, no shortage of people interested in bringing their stuff in. So that's been awesome. Like from the day we opened, uh, we've got, uh, I think in the neighborhood of 80 to a hundred consigners now, uh, regular consigners. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, and, and we get, we get a lot of, um, people added to our mailing list that way. Uh, I, I made some changes to the website recently that they, normally that is the, another way to bring, uh, people where they can subscribe to our website. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, subscribe to our mailing list. But right now the primary way is through our social media, okay. through Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, and so I see you've got those two down here on your contact page. Um, and then, like you said, there's no sign up right now. So that recently was something that was removed. But I believe in an earlier conversation, you were saying that you do intend to 
bring that back to your website so you can try to capture as much of that traffic as possible. Then. Yeah, it got, yeah, it got left out somewhere in the, uh, in the changes we made yep. in uh, December. So uh, I'll yep. have to... Which is totally common as again, yeah. you're, you're wearing so many hats that it's hard to, to keep on top of all the different little aspects. And so I believe you're saying also that you're using MailChimp then as the platform to do your, your distribution, your email distribution. Yes. Uh, I'm using MailChimp have been for a long time. It offers a lot of tools and uh, yeah. um, you know, there's, there's, I'm constantly trying to figure out the best way to utilize it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I take full advantage of it all yeah. the time, but uh, uh, there are certain integrations. There's integrations with my POS into MailChimp, uh, which helps. Um, I was looking yesterday into landing pages, but figured they didn't quite work for my consignment model. Yeah. Um, so there's, uh, yeah, there's, there's always ways to, uh, to increase. I'll certainly have to add the, uh, the sign up. Thing yeah. To our website again. So just a couple quick things that I noticed when I was on your uh, website for the first time was was that inability to kind of sign up for something, and so that's pretty common. One thing that I would recommend that you do is either there, uh, well, in both places probably there as well as in the actual uh, shop side of of your online um, exposure here would be to have a pop up that gives them some incentive to sign up. So. Uh, that could be, you know, a discount code on their first order or free shipping, or it could be um, some, some enticement where they get a little extra bonus. Uh, it's almost like a bribe in order to yeah. get them to sign up so that you have that ability to continue reaching out to them. And so one of the things that I also want to circle back to that I was really um, thought is important to emphasize is that for a lot of businesses, like you said, the integrations with some other online shopping portals like um, Shopify or like WooCommerce um, or BigCommerce, what they, they've got these great interact or integrations into social media. But oftentimes I see uh, businesses trying to build their business so almost strictly within those social platforms. And so those social platforms are getting much more powerful and you can do the buying directly within Absolutely. them. But with that comes a big risk because you now don't control the relationship, so to speak, with the customer. Um, you don't have them uh, coming to a place that is, you own. You don't own uh, Facebook as much as you've got that Facebook page and you think that you know that's going to be around forever. Um, it could come and go as Facebook pleases or they could start to charge more um, for you to have it, to have that presence there. And so you're kind of uh, exposing yourself to some significant risk. And so there's significant potential gain, but because of your POS system was kind of restrictive in the sense where you didn't have those integrations, in the long run, it might actually protect you. Um, and it really forces you to build your business on something that you actually own, which is your own platform here. Uh, your own store so you bring up a good point because it's really important not to get locked into a platform or a product that yeah. that that is restricting in how it integrates with other products and then you're stuck yeah um yeah that's a, it's an important point yeah so so just back to the website a uh, couple things that i would say so on the main uh page having um the header menu up in the the whiter part of the background image that you has that you have there is difficult to read and so either changing the font um, or putting some sort of like as soon as I start to scroll then I've got this um, white background that occurs there I might actually consider having that permanently on there and I know this is a WordPress site and so you can adjust those things within the theme settings and so I'm, I'm aware of it it's it's one of yeah. those little things that uh uh, because we're using, uh, uh, and here, it, again, it, getting locked into a, uh, there's these building tools now that, that are offered within WordPress yeah. that uh, once you implement them, uh, they offer a lot of benefits around simplicity and ease of implementation, but there's always drawbacks on. And, and a that, compromise. Yeah. With, without, there's always a compromise. And that yeah. whole background being, is is a compromise to do with um, these building blocks with a tool that uh, someone implemented on on that page that I don't normally use. So yeah, uh, yeah. So that's uh, 
it ties in with our last conversation there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so this is the thing. I mean, your work is never done as the owner, oh, as the absolutely. person doing the marketing. So the little things like that. So I'll just point out a couple other things. Um, one thing that I would definitely have on this main page, because you were talking about the importance of your social media channels uh, to the overall uh, traffic generation there to, back to your shop then. And so I would make it as a apparent as possible that you have two platforms, social platforms that you really focus on and try to promote people signing up and following you on those ones. Um, so I would have some uh, uh, easy you know, logo. Page. Yeah. Easy logo uh, clicks or some incentives for them to follow you over there as well, which would be really good. So that would be important. I love the fact that you're hitting on the two key things here so shop online is very clear the schedule of visit part also the button is clear in terms of what the purpose is you click on that to to schedule a visit but i think it, especially as you start to move towards that kind of more white glove experience it would be a good idea to build some context around what this scheduling a visit uh what the benefit of that is and so yeah. In the interim, it's, uh, you know, once you are able to be open and have people in the store, then it's, it's really about, this is a way for us to take those, uh, you know, COVID responsible uh, practices in terms of, of social distancing and making sure that things are sanitary and so on. So this is going to be a, one of the safest uh, probably environments in all of Cal Calgary to actually do some physical shopping. And so that's really a great idea to build a little context around that. Um, and then I'd imagine like these ones here, none of these hyperlink. And so I, what I would definitely do over here is I'd still hyperlink uh, some of this to either more information or in this case in the women and men right to the store. Um, so that uh, when people are, you know, surfing around, you just make it as easy as possible for them to click on it. And so a lot of people would say, yeah. well, but it's really clear, Lance. I got the shop up online up here and I got the shop button up here, which both take me over there. Um, don't take anything for granted in terms of whether or not your audience is going to understand where they're supposed to click. So in user interface design, uh, best practices, definitely uh, hyperlinking some more of these things over here so that it's just really easy for them to click and boom, they're over to where you want them to be. So that's just a real quick uh, tidbit or you know, a couple adjustments I'd make there. I would also have your phone number on here or uh, if that is something that you would want them to be calling, which I think that you would. And yeah. so you've got the ability to book appointments, but I would have maybe right up here in the upper right corner of your main header, an actual phone number in which they can uh, call or something that is also really common nowadays is a chat window or chat pop-up, uh, which usually is over here in the bottom right corner. And that allows people to ask questions without having to make the call or without having to dig around to find those That would answers. be huge, I think, especially for the around the scheduling visits and make that whole personal experience. It's to have that chat and that's yep. critical. Yeah, we're always finding ways to improve this. And, and it's a totally. matter of, again, the resources and time and whatnot to, to make the changes. Yep. Uh, one of the things that I realized too that I'm going to change and I'm working on now is, is the, uh, you know, the scheduling a visit uh, is great, but to have it on the main page when people are shopping in the store is kind of not intuitive. So I'm, I'm, I want to have a book of time in the store that comes up, you know, like it's up in the top here somewhere where they, where they, where it's linked, where they can schedule their pickup right? Gotcha. Right fr from the store. So that, that you're always discovering these little things that, that yeah. will improve and, and it's finding the time and resources to, to implement them. But. Yeah. Yeah. No, and you're doing some really great things. And the thing that I love about the approach that you have, and this is really important for all business people, is to you you understand that it's constantly evolving. The website's constantly evolving. The store uh, online is constantly evolving. Your bricks and mortar store is constantly evolving. Like it yeah. all is always uh, constantly changing because you're seeing opportunities or restrictions or, um, you know, it's just the, the course of, of micro improvements. But as you're doing those improvements, you end up uh, compounding the effects of that. And you end up moving your business forward a lot quicker than, um, than what you would be if you were just. And that's you know, the silver lining in this whole experience, right? Is that we're all moving and evolving and improving our stores, whether we, you know, it was done out of necessity or, you know, it's, it's forcing us to re rethink and, and improve 
where we may not have or may not have done so quickly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so when it comes to the social, so I've got your Facebook page up here and I'll throw up um, as well your um, Instagram page. The Instagram is great. You've got lots of, uh, you know, images of the product, obviously, which makes sense. And uh, so you're able to really showcase what it is that people are wanting uh, here. A uh, question for you on um, advertising. Are you doing any paid advertising at all? Yeah. On both on social media, primarily in, in Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. And so both of those are really great places. Have you also taken a look at Pinterest as being an option for you to be uh, placing some product there as well? Um, not uh, significantly. We'd had in the past, like four years ago, and I went away from it. Um, okay. I haven't looked again recently, so it might be a, might be an area where I, where I should, that I should consider. I mean, yeah. And, but again, I think for the audience that's uh, listening to this conversation, I think it's really important for you guys to do um, really well at one or two, not necessarily be everywhere. And so I agree totally. Yeah. So again, for you at this particular point in time, it might not make sense to be over in Pinterest, but at some point in the future, when you've got more ability, more time or more staff to be able to manage some of that. Um, otherwise it does become a bit of a burden. And so you're spinning your wheels. And so I like the way that you've focused on the Facebook platforms, which is Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. right now. I think it makes a lot of sense because you're going into um, like from an ad standpoint, you're going into the same back end uh, place to uh, position those ads and, and create those ads and so on and manage them mm -hmm. as opposed to having multiple places in which you're doing it. The, you're the right. other the hyper focus I think is important. And, and, and right now it's been Facebook, Instagram and the new platform for me, it's not going to be another social, it'll be my website, which yeah. clearly needs some work and, and was not a priority in the past, but yep. as, as big as it is now. I mean, now it's, yeah. Yeah. it's key. Yeah, totally. Right. All of a sudden, everybody's looking at their websites and going, oh my God, I got to get this yeah. fixed up. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so we're doing a lot of work with clients right now in that regard as well, uh, because the website itself is your you know, the portal into your business that most uh, people are going to find. So they're going to be in social there, but at some point they're likely going to pop over to your website, uh, learn a little bit more. And then obviously the shop when they, when they're ready to buy all your links are going back to your shop. And so it's really important to make sure that you've got a good uh, user experience there. The other thing that, and I've mentioned this in previous episodes too, and I don't know what the limitations might be on the uh, POS slash online store that you have. But another thing that is really helpful is to also have the ability for people to subscribe to your page, to your website um, or to your store. And so this is not just your subscriptions on emails, but this would be to um, notifications basically that you would be able to send into their inbox as soon as those people um, you know, are online, regardless of where they're online, I should say, actually. And so if, if they're surfing some other website, you can still see a little pop-up notification pop up usually in the bottom right corner uh, from you if they've subscribed for those updates. And so you would have like a little uh, uh, subscription capability uh, bolt on third party that just pops up as soon as somebody's been on your site for a little bit that of time. Would be great. There's like yeah. new, new arrivals to the store and, and things like that. Yep. And again, you can create some sort of incentive for them. So uh, same thing as signing up to the newsletter. It gets, just gives you the opportunity to, to get another list of people who maybe are hesitant to sign up for a newsletter, but they are very much interested in just staying abreast of what um, you've got in the store. And so the content then that I would be pushing out there as well as on you know, obviously on Instagram, you're doing it and in your emails is notifications around new products. So for instance, when this Banana Republic spotted uh, dress, uh, when you first brought that into consignment, well, then it would be great to have a little push notification that would go out to everybody uh, saying, hey, we just got a new arrival or you segment your list, obviously, in this case, maybe just to, to women. Um, so the women get this notification that you've got this new arrival that they might be interested in checking out. And so that's a way of, of uh, really amplifying the potential on those sales. And so it's really about segmenting your audience. And I think in 
in any type of retail kind of environment, you need to need to do a very good job of segmenting it so that the articles that you're promoting to them are very specific uh, to what their potential needs or desires are. So the initial segmentation obviously would be gender is what I, where I go with. And then I would start to segment if I could into either age categories or size categories or something like that um, in which then you would say send this out i don't know what size this is but if it's a size um, uh, you know that fits within a particular range of a segment of your women's audience well then those would be the people who would get it but the women who yeah, that was one of the challenges that uh, it, it, the unique aspect of the consignment business is that everything in our store is a one-off Yes. So when you're choosing that Banana Republic, you don't get to choose the color and size. Yeah. It's if it's if it's small and that's the, the you're small, that's the item for you, and it's you know it resonates with you. It's a tough thing, and so in choosing a consignment piece for my POS, that's why it was so critical. I mean, it's a completely different model than your typical retail. Yeah. Yeah, and from a marketing standpoint, it's very unique as well because they they are are all one-offs and so i think for your audience they might get really frustrated if they were getting notifications um, that either via email or through these push notifications on your website um, that hey you got this side. new arrival and they're like oh that's so beautiful you know i want it yeah then they come over and it's like oh man like again it's not my size then that kind of almost reinforces this idea that well if i don't want to waste my time i need to go to a store that has all the different sizes as options so you want to minimize that and maximize the advantage that you've got which is you know you've got great products high-end products that have got a really great sticker price to it and um you know we're only going to bother you if we have something that's going to actually be something that you might be interested in buying and so that, that's just that whole communication piece. The more personalized you can make it, the better chance you're going to have um, much better um, conversion rates than out of that. Yeah, on that personalization thing, I think it's really important that people, like you were talking about the social media and whatnot, but staying engaged and, and, and putting a, a face forward that's, that's business as usual throughout this whole thing, I think is really, really important. Um, I mean, you could do the notifications on, on the, the, you know, what you're doing and your business plans around COVID and things like that. But on, on your, your daily posts and your, it, it should be a real business as usual kind of uh, face that you're putting forward. Yeah. Uh, I think that's critical. Yeah. Yeah. And just to expand on that personalization piece a little bit more, one of the challenges that a lot of businesses have in, in being able to identify the, the client is going to be getting, gathering information about what their interests, their wants, or the category that they should be placed within is. Now, in a store environment, it's really, really great, like an online store, because you know that if they bought a size eight dress, well, they are interested in products probably that are of that size. And so you can start to build those profiles uh, fairly quickly and just kind of almost automatically within some of these platforms that way and, and drop people into them. For other stores who don't have that ability, where their purchase doesn't necessarily indicate some of those other you know, key data points on their audience, then surveys is, is really a good idea mm -hmm. to send out some surveys every once in a while. And a really cheap way of doing that is Google surveys. They're real, they're free. You know, all you need is a Google account, a free Gmail account, and you can create a Google survey that maybe you email out or you post in the social media and get people to uh, complete that. And that uh, then you can use to update then your profiles in your CMS or in your uh, CRM, depending on what kind of, or your POS system in this case. And so uh, that will allow you then to send out those more uh, specialized and personalized uh, pieces of information to people for those conversions. Yeah. And so that's one of the oh, sorry, benefits, go ahead. sorry, that's one of the benefits of a brick and mortar yeah. is that you, is that you have that relationship with your customers and it's immediate yeah. and there, you get to know them. And uh, that isn't so much a part of the online and e-commerce experience, but, uh, um, what I wanted to, the reason I interrupted is one, I wanted to bring up an important point and that's that, um, interacting with those customers is key during this time. And, and some of the, 
it's been challenging and we all have, uh, you know, we have our good days and our bad days. And some days you just go, what, you know, what, what's, what am I going to do? Like, this is just so, uh, uh, overwhelming. Um, and will, and you, you start questioning, you know, what, but you know, what gets me out of it is are those days where I'll actually phone my customers and, and I've been trying to do that, phone them all and give them just updates, like personally, where I like, can talk to them and tell them what's what's going on and every time i do that i get so much support back from my customers yeah like like it it just it's little it's uplifting yeah so i recommend highly if you ever having a down day as a small business person you'd be surprised how much support your own existing customers can be just reach out yeah. to them give them a call they, they want you to survive they want you to they, they they're behind you and, and rooting for you as much as anybody and uh, they're a, they're, it's a, it's a great way to get a little boost. Yeah. I think that's a really great tip. Um, because mentally this is difficult. This is a difficult yeah. time for all of us business owners. Right. And so, uh, obviously there's people who know and love you and your products and your business and what you do for them. Right. There's a, was a benefit that they identified when they first became a customer. And so, yeah, having that personal, uh, relationships go a huge, way in all types of businesses. I'm just impressed that from a retail standpoint, I don't know, I've, ne I've never been called <laughs> by a retailer uh, that I frequented uh, and you know, just picked up the phone and, and wanted to talk, give me a bit of an update on what's going on in the store and so on. So that's, that's fabulous. I think that that well, will it's, really it's set you apart. More than anything, it's probably a little self-serving, but, uh, yeah. but, but yeah, it's, uh, it's great. Yeah. So wherever you can do those reach outs and get that two way communication happening. And that's on social as well. So a lot of, again, we push sometimes as businesses, we push information out into social, but we don't necessarily do that two way communication piece, which is what is so powerful about social media and helps you really build that tribe. And so engaging and having conversations, asking questions uh, of your audience is really, really important. And I just, uh, I just realized you're the digital marketing guru and I just told people to use their phone. No, 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 <laughs> no. So, so, I mean, we, we focus a lot on digital, but at the end, end of the day, what we want is, is businesses that are going to be, uh, you know, successful. We want to help them become more successful. And so I, I mean, I spent a lot of time in the analog world, uh, doing yeah, a yeah. lot of different things. And so, you know, in terms of business development for what we do, um, you know, the meeting people and having conversations with real people, that's huge. And every business, you don't want Absolutely. to step away from that, I don't think. I mean, obviously, at a point, you might get to a place where the scale is just too large, where you can't do that as much. But there's other ways of doing it, like I said, on social media and, and um, having much more of a conversational tone to the emails that you're sending out to uh, your database as well. So anyway, I, I really appreciate the time that you shared with us. Uh, we've uh, gone a little longer than what I had anticipated, but, and I, and I know the audience maybe was expecting this to be a little bit more like some of our other uh, episodes in which we are really um, providing, you know, really clear advice and tackling a particular problem. But today I really wanted just to hear what you were doing, how you pivoted, hear your story a bit. Um, and you've shared so much with everybody. What I'm sure that they're going to be able to find some uh, elements that they're going to be able to take away and, and use in their business. So thank you very much, Dominic. I really appreciated yeah. that. Yeah, when, um, you, when you touted me as an expert coming in, I was going to I was going to say I may not be, I'm, but I'm more like everybody else who's uh, just struggling, a small business person. Yeah. So why don't you tell everybody where they can uh, find you again, uh, just so that that uh, if they wanted to, they can reach out to you. So we're located in Crescent Heights in Calgary at uh, 906 Center Street. Uh, that's our location. And uh, obviously on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and, uh, and our website's www.urbanthrift.ca. Perfect. Uh, and that's where you'll find the store and whatnot. Excellent. Okay. So we're came to the end of this episode. Thanks again, Dominic. I really appreciate it. And I just wanted to let everybody know that this is going to be uh, available in the archives as well as a bunch of our other episodes or all of our previous episodes actually are. And if you wanted to watch any of them in which we get some tips around email marketing, some more stuff around online uh, business pivoting, as well as uh, all things digital and video and so on, uh, head over to amplemedia.com forward slash amplify. And 
that will get you access. It's completely free um, to access all of our past episodes uh, so that you can learn and improve your business. And I also want to mention on that page, uh, there's a little, um, you know, apply to become a guest or to be featured in an upcoming episode. If you are interested in having your business featured and, and um, maybe have some free advice given to you uh, in a format like this, then please uh, complete that form and we'll be in touch and talk a little bit about your business and, and what that opportunity might be in, in terms of coming onto the show. So thanks again, Dominic, really appreciate it. And thanks, everybody uh, stay tuned for the next episode when it comes out next week. Talk to you later. Okay, so I'm just going to end the recording on that now.